It's time for From the Short Grass with Trey Schaap, a golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends, all while chasing a ball around trying to put it in a four and a quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, an independent financial services firm with the freedom to focus on what matters most. Blackman Auctions. For over 80 years, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. We partner with you to deliver high yield results by managing, developing, and investing in top quality hospitality assets. And now, from the short grass, here is your host, Trey Schaap. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Schaap. This past weekend, I traveled to Las Colinas Country Club in Irving, Texas for the Invited Celebrity Classic. Tony Romo came from three spots back to win the celebrity division of the Invited Celebrity Classic. They use a modified Stableford scoring system. He had 40 points on his Sunday final round to finish with a total of 107 he beat out Marty Fish, who finished with 102. Annika Sorenstam with 101. Mark Mulder was fourth with 100 points. Tony Romo, birdie in holes right and left, started his round with a birdie on one, birdied 15, and got up and down out of the bunker on 18 to secure the win. Tony Romo getting it done as a celebrity in the Invited Celebrity Classic. Mark Hensby won the pros division of the Invited Celebrity Classic. He did it on the fourth playoff hole over Charlie Wee. After they were both tied at minus 12, they both parred 18. They played 18 again and parred it. Then they both parred 17, the par 3. And then Charlie Wee made a double bogey on the 18th hole. Their fourth playoff hole, Mark Hensby, able to make par. Mark Hensby and Charlie Wee went into the playoff. Alex Chaka finished third. Richard Green fourth, along with Jerry Kelly. I want to tell you a little bit about the Tornado Relief Golf Tournament that Ken Duke and Glenn Day have put together. It's going to take place on May 15th at Burns Park Golf Course in North Little Rock, I'm going to tell you how to sign up here in a little bit, so grab pen and paper if you have time, if you're not driving, if you want to participate in this event. To tell you a little more about the golf tournament at Burns Park on May 15th, I was able to talk with Ken Duke. Ken, you and Glenn Day have teamed up to help support the tornado relief efforts. Um, devastating tornado went through central Arkansas. Why did you two decide to come together? Well, we were just playing golf one day, then something came up about you know, this storm that came through and, and he said, hey, we should do something, you know, to try to give back and help back. And that's what our Kansans do. We all come together as a family. And uh, so we just do this together and he called all of his friends. I called all my friends and here we go. I think it's going to be really special. May 15th, Burns Park in North Little Rock and the tornado actually went just to the west of the golf course there. And I think there was a little damage on one of the 18s. I think so. Uh, but I know the West Little Rock area, um, Rodney Parham, Shackelford, Cantrell, all that stuff just got pounded. Uh, obviously, in Wynn, Arkansas as well. We're going to try to help them as well. But, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's just sad this stuff happens. It happens everywhere. And, you know, just uh, it's just uh, we're just trying to help out as much as possible. And, and you know, the, the community of Arkansas and Little Rock is wonderful. I remember uh, the Arkadelphia tornado. I mean, you went to Henderson State, the one that went right through the middle of town back in the 90s. That was a devastating one as well. That's a funny story because I was playing the Asian tour at the time, and I was in Singapore, and our only Americanized station was CNN, and it said strong storms in Arkansas. It just caught my eye, and that's the only thing I was watching, right? So um, came up and said, Arkadelphia, Arkansas, Category 5 her, uh, tornado, um, and I'm freaking out, and I'm over in Singapore, you know, kid from a little small town you know, over there. Um, Luckily, it was during the middle of the day on a Saturday, too, and that was uh, the big part because everybody prepared for it and no, the daycare that got just smashed, nobody was there. So it's just uh, these things are bad. They're really bad. You guys are going to put on a clinic out there on May 15th? Yeah, well, really more than anything, just say thank you guys for coming and supporting us this quick uh, 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 turnaround. Uh, we'll hit a few shots and asking anybody wants to ask any questions, stuff like that, and uh, we'll go forward. 
Ken, best of luck with it. Appreciate it so much. Thank you. The charity golf tournament that benefits victims of the Arkansas tornado is going to be a four-man scramble. There will be a clinic with PGA Tour professional golfers Glenn Day and Ken Duke. Lunch and prizes. 12 o'clock is the lunch. 1 o'clock is the clinic. There's a 1.30 shotgun start. There will be prizes and snacks following play. It will all take place Monday, May 15th at Burns Park Golf Course in North Little Rock, so tee it up for Tornado Relief with Glenn Day and Ken Duke. For more information, email Jennifer Day at jrday2121 at comcast.net. That's jrday2121 at comcast.net. That's for more information on the charity golf tournament that will take place at Burns Park Golf Course on May 15th. I want to thank one of our sponsors of From the Shoregrass, Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group. Matthew Allen, Blair Allen, they know how to manage hotel properties. If you need an overnight place to stay, make sure it's one of their hotel properties. How do you do that? You go on the web, bphotels.com. They have a list of their properties right there. Find one that is close to your location where you need to be and make sure you're staying at a Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group property. We're back with Annika Sorenstam. After this, on From the Short Grass. This is Thomas Blackman with Blackman Auctions. You all know by now I'm not a good golfer, but my son loves the game and he and I have been playing more. I've got my score down to, um, I've quit playing a scramble on every hole. I'm using the bunker rake much less than I used to, and a lot of the time I hit my drives past the women's tee box. All of my success in golf can directly be tied to me listening to From the Short Grass. Without it, I would not be the golfer I am today. Trey, you owe me 20 bucks for that. Trey knows golf, I know auctions. Come see us at BlackmanAuctions.com. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. With all the decisions you need to make about what to do in El Dorado, finding a place to stay is an easy one. The Haywood is uniquely positioned to make your stay one to treasure. Located in the historic Union Square district of El Dorado, the Haywood offers luxurious accommodations that feature contemporary, colorful rooms with high-quality bedding. Comfortable baths with walk-in showers and a spacious workspace with stylish plantation shutters that are unique additions to the stunning decor in a non-smoking environment. Make the Haywood your home away from home the next time you visit El Dorado. Strength is measured not by the number of accounts. Strength is placing value on relationships. It's having the vision and the guts to invest in growth. It's the commitment to responsibly manage your money. At Stevens, we believe that our strengths build success, not only for us, but for our clients. Stevens, member NYSE, SIPC. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. Annika Sorenstam really doesn't need an introduction, but I'm going to give you one. She was born on October the 9th, 1970 in Bro, Sweden. She came to the United States to go to college at the University of Arizona on a golf scholarship. She turned professional in 1992 and eventually joined the LPGA Tour in 1994. She is third all-time in LPGA Tour victories with 72. She's fifth all-time on the Ladies European Tour with 17 victories. When it's all told, she has 97 professional wins. She has won 10 LPGA Major Championships. The Chevron Championship, the Women's PGA Championship, the U.S. Women's Open, the Du Maurier Classic, and the Women's British Open. But it was her victory in 1995 at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs, Colorado, site of the U.S. Women's Open that year. That became her first official victory on the LPGA Tour. She won eight Player of the Year awards, which is still a record today. Six VARE trophies given to the LPGA player with the lowest seasonal scoring average. She is the only female golfer to ever shoot a 59 in competition. She represented Europe in the Solheim Cup on eight occasions between 1994 and 2000. In 2003, she played in the Bank of America Colonial Tournament in Fort Worth, Texas to become the first woman to play in a PGA Tour event since 1945. On January the 7th of 2021, she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from then-President Donald Trump. Annika Sorenstam, 
regarded as one of the best female golfers in history, is on the tee. Hanukkah, thanks for joining me on From the Short Grass. I want to take you back. When did you first pick up a golf club? Do you remember that? Um, I started playing when I was 12 years old. I played a lot of sports growing up. Uh, Golf wasn't really that exciting to me in the beginning because I competed in tennis and soccer and downhill skiing. So I wanted a sport that I thought had a little bit more a little more fast paced, but uh, you know, once I start playing, I get really hooked. <laughs> Downhill skiing. I mean, being from Sweden, I get that, but then why golf? Uh, well, golf is, you know, quite a big sport in Sweden, not as big as hockey and soccer, but I want to say it's like number three or number four. And my parents played the game. We lived really close to a golf course. And I think, you know, the more I played, the more I realized how difficult it was and how more I wanted to you know, just trying to figure it out and how to hit the shot or make that putt. Or I was just uh, intrigued by the challenge. Do you remember the actual day or date that you were hooked uh-huh. with golf? No, I, I know I don't, but I do remember just at the age of 16, I told my dad I'm done with all the other sports. I just want to play golf. So, so I think that year is when I started to commit full time to golf. When you were young, who did you look up to that were playing the game of golf? Um, you know, we didn't have the social media we do today. We certainly didn't have a coverage, not a women's coverage. I mean, I grew up watching a lot of uh, men in Europe playing. It was, um, you know, it was Bernard Langer, Nick Faldo. Um, yeah, those type of guys that we just watched. And and, uh, and then I, you know, I've heard about Nancy Lopez and obviously Anna Palmer and Jack Nicklaus more from, you know, over here in the U.S. So they were... You know, those Hall of Famers that I never thought I would meet. But, yeah, they were inspiring. And it's like, wow, it looks like they're having a good time. <laughs> when you moved to the States, joined the LPGA Tour, what was that trek like for you? Well, I uh, came over here in 1990 on a scholarship and um, really enjoyed my time at the University of Arizona. And then I decided to turn pro two years later. And, you know, I missed uh, tour school or the qualification to get my card the first year on the LPGA. So I played in Europe for a year and I think looking back it was a good lesson you know obviously I was disappointed to not make the LPGA my first try but uh, I matured I got better and and it helped me to be ready when I did get uh, on the tour in in 1994. When you finally won the first tour event what were your emotions like? Oh I mean obviously it was huge I mean to win a tournament is great and then to win the U.S. Open is even greater. So I think, of course, I was overwhelmed and shocked and everything. But it was just also, I mean, it kickstarted my career. And um, you know, I still look back at that time in '95 when it was such a change in my career. And um, yeah, it was great, of course. <laughs> Did you think at the time you were prepared for what was to come? Um, I wasn't prepared, but because I, I knew that you know I hadn't reached my full potential, and all, re- all of a sudden I'm winning a major. Uh, I knew I, I was just kind of a somewhat a rookie out there and had a lot to learn and a lot more to experience and, uh, you know, I had to learn some more lessons. But, you know, it, you do it quickly when you're thrown in that into that scene in that arena. So, um, but it was great. I have so many wonderful memories. And, of course, I've cheated a lot more than I ever thought I could. What do you say to young girls that want to maybe follow in your footsteps and play on the LPGA Tour? Well, you should give it a try. I mean, I... You know, I look at my life and the opportunities and the people I met and the places I've gone. It's been tremendous. And so if you have a chance, of course, you should give it a try. It's all about having fun. It's being committed and disciplined. I mean, it's hard, uh, very competitive, and um, could be lonely sometimes. But if you don't try, you don't know. So give it a shot. Your name is on a collegiate event, the Annika. The University of Arkansas has won that twice. Shauna Estes-Taylor, the, the coach there, and Maria Fossey won the individual there as well. Why do you give back in that form? Oh, because I, I want to say thank you. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for golf, you know, so this is my way to inspire the next generation and make, uh, you know, the golf world in a better place and uh, especially girls golf, women's golf too, uh, because I was there not that long ago, but uh, so how can I, you know, kind of my pay it forward type uh, philosophy and it's been great. I love seeing the next generation grow and mature and um, achieve success. How's your game? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I do practice a little bit. Actually, I, I practice quite a bit. Haven't really competed in several months, but um, this is more about being out here, having a good time. I enjoy playing the celebrity events. The guys are really nice, and playing here with the champions uh, makes it very special. When you look back at Colonial 20 years ago, what do you remember about that? 
Oh, I remember a lot of things. I mean, it was a highlight of my career and changed a lot of things, my mindset and how I go about things, but also just, you know, the challenges and, and what it was like. I was very, very nervous, of course, but it was also historic moments and um, something I still talk about today. Was it a crazy week? Was the build up to that Thursday first tee shot crazy? I mean, did you just feel the, the pressure getting to you as that Thursday crept closer? I think so. I mean, I... You know, I tried to be prepared. I tried to do everything I thought, you know. It's hard to prepare something you don't really know what to expect, but I was ready from a game perspective. I felt my good was in good shape and my body was good and ready mentally. And But, of course, you know, once we start getting closer to the tea time, how just the, you know, the atmosphere and all the people, and then it started to hit me, you know, it's uh, this is really happening. But, uh, yeah, I was nervous, of extremely nervous on the first tee but you know once I got the you know the ball to stay on the tee and hit the first shot it was like oh let's just play give me a little bit about fizzy bees yeah yeah fizzy bees change of change of gear Uh, my husband I started this uh, sparkling classic cocktail it's vodka based but sweetened with organic honey during COVID we were a little bored and um, there's a lot of RTDs ready to drink out there that we felt had no flavor or they had so much flavor with so many calories and a lot of sugar and you know I studied nutrition in school and I looked at Mike and I said why don't we come up with our own and he said sweetie no well you're such a busy bee we don't need more projects and there's the name and it's just that uh, it's going quite well obviously it's a mom and pop shop um, but we're trying to navigate through the the distribution channels and get our products pollinated out there everywhere but it's been fun learning a lot about a new industry and uh, you know it's not easy I thought golf was uh, kind of a male dominated sport I can tell you that uh, uh, the spirit industry is a very male dominated sport so I had to go back to all the things I learned when I played at Colonia go out there and persevere and be disciplined and focus hard and be patient so we'll see how it goes. Do you think you're getting there? I hope so. I mean, we're selling literally in four states, which if you think about it, you here you go from your kitchen recipe to seeing it in a store, a Kroger store or Giant Eagle store or Meyer store or, you know, Rayleigh's. I mean, these are massive grocery store. And then you see your drink there that you have designed from the very beginning. It's it's kind of an interesting feeling and a feeling of, you know, being proud, of course, and hard work. And, you know, it's, you know, I love a little bit of that entrepreneurial spirit I, you know I like building things and creating things so we'll see how long it goes your kids they love the game of golf don't they our son loves a lot our, our daughter she plays a little but not as much but Will is crazy about the game so it's fun to see his passion do you think that uh, he'll have a chance to make it someday into college first off and then maybe professional golf if that's what he wants to do well time will tell he um that's his goal uh, exactly that he wants to play high school golf college golf and then play on the PGA Tour it's you know we talk about how tough it is but um, you know I also tell him that you know growing up in Sweden as a little girl don't you think I dreamed about it so you know uh, everybody should have a dream and if you have a dream and if you have the passion and the will and the desire I just tell him go for it does he beat you uh, he's getting there you know we play different tees but he has amazing short games so we do a little challenges putting you know putting matches and so forth and you know I have um, I have to work hard to uh, uh, to beat him which is what I what I what it should be I said you know the day you beat me you're in good buddy so let's just keep trying don't get upset that I beat you uh, but you know I'm on my way out and he's he's on his way in favorite golf course you've ever played oh I like uh, Pine Valley is my favorite mm-hmm. that was quick yeah because it's really good I mean it's just really difficult but it's just so amazing and so secluded and just just a great challenge let me ask you i'll throw in another one the broadmoor what does that mean to you oh i love the broadmoor too you know there's so many great courses out there obviously very different than uh than pine valley but um you know that's where my career started and have, we have good friends there great memories and it's a tough course especially around the greens uh, but it's a beautiful area colorado in the summer is hard to beat fantasy foursome three other players living or deceased that you could play around a golf with who would they be yeah, so if you would have asked me this question, you know, 15 years ago, it would have been a different answer. But now it's obviously my family, my husband and my two kids. We can go out and play and have a good time. Just spending time together and, and sharing golf memories, it's just it's the best. Say I was asking it 20 years ago, who would it be? Yeah, it would probably have been a, a twosome with a Brad Pitt, and that would have been enough. Thanks for your Thank time. You. Okay, thanks. My thanks to Annika Sorenstam for taking some time out of her busy schedule to stop and talk with me for a little bit so that I could bring you that interview.
Once again, on May 15th, Ken Duke and Glenn Day are going to put on a golf tournament for tornado relief to help those who were affected by the tornado that went through central Arkansas and win Arkansas as well. Once again, get pen and paper ready. We're going to tell you how you can sign up for this golf tournament and where you need to go to get more information. But first, I want you to hear from Little Rock resident and PGA Tour professional, Glenn Day. Glenn, you live in Little Rock. It's your home. Tornado went through there. You and Ken decided to get together and put on a golf tournament. Yes. You know, uh, Jennifer and I were talking about it, and, uh, you know, we were like, we need to do something. And I said, well, I'm playing golf with Ken today. Uh, I want to ask him, you know, and it's something we do. And then Ken and I started talking about it, and and it's kind of a no-brainer. Yes. uh, It's uh, nothing fancy, nothing special. We're just trying to raise money. And Every dollar we raise is going to go straight to, you know, helping the, the victims of the tornado. You know, we're not going to do anything to give to an organization that uh, money may go to staff or something. If we have to go buy food and put it in a bag and hand it out, we're going to do that. Every dollar is going to go to, to the relief. Burns Park Golf Course, May 15th. Uh, you're no f- stranger to Burns Park. No, we like Burns Park. You know, Steve Ralston's out there and he's family. And uh, uh, Terry Hartwick was was unbelievably gracious uh, when I called Terry and I said, we're, we're thinking about doing this and we're going to help Little Rock, North Little Rock, and win Arkansas. And uh, I said, he goes, what do you need? I said, I need a golf course. And he, I mean, without hesitation, he goes, take Burns Park. You got it. Whatever you need. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Anything we can raise is great. Um, if you can't show up, uh, we'll take donations. We take anything. I mean, we're just trying to help. And your wife is spearheading this now. Well, you know, she does a lot. Um, she she ran the day for charity when we had that here. Um, she does a lot for car tie. I think she's on the board there and a couple of different boards and Festival of Trees. So she does a lot for charity. She knows how all of this works. And, yes, she is spearheading everything. Glenn, best of luck with the tournament. Thank you very much. So just to recap for you, Monday, May 15th at Burns Park Golf Course in North Little Rock, the address is 30 Championship Drive. That's actually in Burns Park. A four-man scramble. There will be a clinic with both Glenn and Ken Duke. 12 o'clock lunch, 1 o'clock the clinic, 1.30 shotgun start. There will be prizes and snacks following play. For more information, email jrday2121 at comcast.net. That's jrday2121 at comcast.net. Tee it up for tornado relief with Glenn Day and Ken Duke. Before we hit the break, I want to tell you about our friends at Blackman Auctions. Thomas Blackman, they know auctions. Since 1938, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. If you like just going to auctions, if you think you might find something at an auction, go to their website, blackmanauctions.com, find out where their next auction is, and go to it. Blackman Auctions. Since 1938, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. We're back with more from the short grass after this. Stay with us. Traveling to Fayetteville to watch a game? Forgot to book a room for the night? Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group has you covered. Stay where the fans stay. Staybridge Suites is just south of Baumwalker Stadium and is an all-suite hotel within walking distance of Baumwalker, Bud Walton, and Razorback Stadium. Or you could stay at the Comfort Inn and Suites with newly remodeled rooms throughout the entire property. Find them on the web at bphotels.com. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. This is Thomas Blackman with Blackman Auctions. The economy is changing slowly but surely. The market is slowing down in a gradual slide. Not an emergency yet, the sky is not falling, but a change is coming. When times are good, auctions make buyers compete to buy at the highest market value. When the economy gets tough, auctions force buyers to make a purchase decision. Either way, auctions get the highest return for a seller and a strong deal for a buyer. With an experienced auction company, it's a simple process. Go to blackmanauctions.com for more information. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. On the tee with our rules segment, here's PGA Master Professional Adam Carney. Adam, this comes in from Jennifer in Benton. What is the correct way to mark your golf ball on the green? And if you need to move it, how do you move it according to the rules? Well, the uh, the rules don't specify a quote-unquote proper way. It just says you have the ability to 
mark the position of your golf ball and lift it. Um, and then it must be replaced on the same spot that it was on when you lifted it. So I would tell you, obviously, the preferred method would be to place a, a, a coin or some other round, flat object behind the golf ball, you know, behind the golf ball in line with the hole, lift it. Um, is there a prohibition against placing that coin in front in between the golf ball and the hole and lifting it? No, as long as you put it back in the same form and fashion. I can't count the number of times I've seen somebody put a coin in front of the ball and then they put the ball back. Like they literally just gained it maybe an inch. Three inches? Not even that. It depends on how big your mark is. Not uh, Yeah, but I mean, it's like... Right. <laughs> it's mean, like, what are you doing? Really? <laughs> yeah. You're 40 feet from the hole. <laughs> 39 feet, 11 inches is going to help. Yeah. But let's say, like, she asked in her question, if you have to move it because a competitor asks, hey, I need you to move your mark. Sure. What do you need to do? So, you know, it, it's, it's just a matter of measuring um, a distance that, you know, gets the mark out of the line of putt of the fellow competitor. And obviously we use putter head a lot. We, you know, you might find a tree or something stationary that's not going to move. You know, I wouldn't use the flag stick on an adjacent green because a group may come up and pull it out, and all of a sudden you don't know your your yeah. orientation. So, um, you know, I might just line it up with the center of a tree, you know, place the putter head down, move it back to the from the toe to the heel, and if that's good, that's good. If it's if it's a big breaking putt and you're, the guy's like, I don't know if it's going to go here, 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 you know, you can measure, you can move it with a club if you have a whole club length if you want to. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, as long as the ball gets placed back in the position it was when you lifted it. So, um, you know, is there, is there, a, is there a, a ruled way of marking your golf ball? No. Um, is there a prescribed method that's recommended? Sure. Placing, the, you know, that object behind the ball, keeping the ball between you and the hole, and replacing it. And then is there a, prob a process for moving that mark if it's in somebody's line of putt? Yes, it's use a putter head is the most common thing. I'll add this as well because what happens if you don't move it back, right? So now we play from a wrong place. We're going to be penalized. Mm -hmm. So I I keep my glove and I don't put with a glove on. Most people don't. I, I keep my glove in my back left pocket. Well, if I move my mark, I take my glove and I wrap. I just wrap it around the shaft and it slides down to the head. So if I go to putt and my gloves there, I realize, hey, I need to move my coin back. Um, and then as a player, after I've putted and I've asked you to move your coin, the first thing I'm gonna say is, hey, don't forget to move your coin back. You know, right? That's you know, it's just common courtesy. Common courtesy. Yeah. But I will say this: I always mark my ball with if it's a coin, whatever, the same side up all the time. So that if I have to move sure. it, I flip it over. So flip let's over. say heads up with a quarter all the time. If I see tails up, I know I've got to move it back. That way I don't have to fool with the glove and putting it on the shaft of the club. Yeah. Well, see, I'm I'm getting old, and so I can't remember heads up and tails up. I, I can't. <laughs> I'd probably forget. Well, what does tails mean again? <laughs> yeah. No, I might. But uh, maybe it's just maybe just barely on the line. So. Instead of placing the coin behind the ball, that you place it to the side of the golf sure. ball, and it, now it's not interfering with that line of putt. Maybe it's a very short putt. That's perfectly acceptable, too, as long as you place the ball back right. where it was. Great question, Jennifer. And if you have a question on the rules of golf, send us an email, from the shortgrass at gmail.com. That will do it for this edition of From the Shortgrass. Again, I want to thank Annika Sorenstam for taking time out of her extremely busy and hectic schedule and chatting with me down in Dallas at Los Colinas Country Club for the Invited Celebrity Classic. Also, if you want more information on the golf tournament that benefits Tornado Relief, email jrday2121 at comcast.net and she will send you all of that information. Remember, when you find your ball mark on the green, fix it and a couple of more. And I hope to see you sometime soon from the short grass you've been listening to from the short grass a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf this has been a presentation of the buzz radio network